record that if global geoengineering was started, it could cause droughts in Asia and Africa. And they state that to the American public for probably obvious reasons. Why would they tell the American public that it could also cause droughts here? Why wouldn't it cause droughts here? There's nothing special about America and, and the geography here that would not have the same effect as Asia and Africa. If the atmosphere is filled with particulates, those particulates diminish and disperse rainfall period. There's too many condensation nuclei, so the water droplets do not combine and fall as rain. They simply adhere to those tiny particles and migrate further, and that's exactly what we see. One of the suggestions about geoengineering has been that we genetically modify trees and plants. Um, we genetically modify crops to be aluminum resistant, and this is ongoing at this time. And part of the geoengineering scheme is to say we're going to put all these chemicals and particles into our atmosphere, which is going to cause air pollution, water pollution, changes in soil pH, and could disrupt agriculture crop production to a great degree. So therefore, instead of saying that maybe this isn't a good idea that we pollute our air, water, and soils with the chemicals we're going to put into the atmosphere, which do come back down, there is a scheme abounding, which is happening right now, to modify some crops so that they are aluminum resistant to the types of chemicals and particles they're going to put into the atmosphere. It's just going to get worse until the point where we're not going to be able to grow anything at all unless it's a Monsanto genetically modified abiotic stress resistant seed. The chemical companies and the genetic and, and Monsanto and all of these companies are working together to make us totally dependent on their products for growing corn or growing any kind of agricultural product or trees, whatever. We're going to corporatize not only where the rainfall goes and who gets it through geoengineering and weather modification schemes, but we're also going to say that these are the, going to be the only crops that are going to grow in areas where we're, we're putting in toxic chemicals that are coming down and altering the soils. One of the most basic things about human society is that we need food and water. And these are two of, two of the things that are, are most severely dependent upon good weather. Rain at the right time of the year, sunshine so crops can grow, not enough sunshine and they don't grow, too much water, the plants die, not enough water, the plants die. All of this goes back to the amount of food that's available. So if you starve people, they will be vulnerable. They will be much easier to manipulate and forced to do whatever a government wants them to do. According to the fifth article of the Bill of Rights amending the Constitution for the United States of America, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. But the daily spraying is depriving all persons living within the United States of life, health, liberty, and integrity of our common and private property without due process of law. As a representative of the people of the United States of America, we insist that you do everything in your power to protect us and immediately put a stop to geoengineering spraying at once. There exists no justification, legal or otherwise, to poison the planet and its inhabitants. Money is happening, and the naysayers say, well, so what? Isn't neutral good? Well, no, neutral's not good. pH. Neutral is not good. If your soil is supposed to be 5.6, it should stay 5.6 if you want the forest to be healthy. And if you want to grow a good garden, you have to keep your pH around 6.0, 6.5. I think that we just need to wake up and just look at what's happening because we can't just ignore it because it's going to get worse and worse if we just keep ignoring it and pushing it away like, oh, that's nothing. There was mason jars and they were brand new, sterilized, and that's what we catch the rain in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a HEPA filter that we tested the air with. Okay, so you caught rain and then you, you basically filtered air. What did you find? Here's another test that's revealing 375,000 yeah. parts per million aluminum, barium at 3,090, and strontium at 345. Yeah, that's from a lined pond with EPDM 
fish safe pond liner. There is no chemicals, manufacturing materials at all in that pond liner that's uh, available to the aquatic life. It's designed for that purpose. The well that feeds this pond has been tested and retested. ND, no detectable aluminum, zero. The only other place this pond can receive water is rainfall. We are located on a filtered forested hilltop, miles and miles and miles away from any industry, highway, and so forth. After several heavy spray days, there was a film that we, we received formed on the surface of the water. And we tested that crust, and it was uh, aluminum and barium that after a year and a half's accumulation had 375,000 parts per billion of aluminum in it. It's literally toxic. We can say conclusively that what we see in the sky matches expressly what's outlined in numerous patents, and the materials on the ground match those patents. This material was not there five years ago. It is a recent phenomenon in the quantities it's in. It, it has escalated in some cases 50,000% in five years, in the case of aluminum. From our original baseline reading of seven parts per billion, which was already high, it has escalated up to 50,000% in five years. And we've seen profound changes in that time. That's fair. So I feel the major toxin in these chemtrails is the aluminum. And from the levels we were looking in at Mount Shasta, this is totally, totally unacceptable. When you get to metals and biological systems, you're no longer talking about the bulk aluminum that people think about when they're using, drinking from soda pop cans and that. So once it gets to the aluminum oxide stage, it just forms a plaque within your arteries and shuts down life. When you take elements that normally aren't out in the environment and you start putting them in the environment, it raises some serious red flags. Mm. Aluminum is a very specific nasty in biological systems. It takes that site and it never lets go and it shuts down the site and that's it. And so as you accumulate aluminum over time, it causes major yeah. neurological damage because it ends up as aluminum oxide that's essentially stuck in place and can't be flushed out by normal systems. we have done any research on this are really quite concerned that we are ill-informed about this issue and mostly that it's being done. Uh, aluminum is toxic. We know that it is. Uh, we can debate as to the amount of toxicity that is going to be disturbing the body, but as far as...